Somebody had asked if you had read the, I guess it's the Traidor Vicente Zambada's book, and they, they were asking if you read it and what was your thoughts on it. Mm, I think that it was a good book. Again, you know, it's coming from a third person, like, you know, her interviews with him, and I think that they don't share too much. You know, he was already in custody, so it doesn't go deep into his personal stuff, and it was it was interesting. Though, like any show on TV, anything you see, I, I heard them ask about narcos. It's going to be, you know, you know, thirty to fifty percent true, or thirty to sixty percent right, true, right. and the rest is just made for TV. You know, and I I appreciate the production; it's entertaining, keeps you watching. You know, but you know, I, I don't I, I I think it's still far from the reality of things. You know, how do you feel about people always pointing y'all out when we're bringing out Chapo, but not talking about Vicente Sambada testifying? I mean, that's that's the 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 thing that people don't understand about how this game really works. You have to get to the top to understand it, you know, just kind of see the dirtiest part of it, you know, that I, I hate to say it this way, but at the end of the day, it becomes like a business deal. You're making a deal to save yourself, you know, you know, and they look at it just like that, like whether they were going to kill you or set you up, you know, and just part of the game, you know, and this is what we do, you know, and I just didn't want to be one of those victims, you know, and, you know, um, it's weird, though, because, you know, his dad continues to operate in such a high level and and he could give green light to um to his son's cooperating and, and turning people in. And, but at the end of the day, he's not God. You know, I don't need his OK, you know. Right. I mean, I'm going to, you know, like his son ain't more important than myself, you know, or my own kids, you know. And I think that no matter what, people might not understand this, but they respect that. You know? Out there, they respect it. They respect it. I mean, they might not like it, but they respect it. Right. You know, I didn't I didn't have nobody's blessing. I didn't have no one's help, you know? How do you uh, feel about what's going on with Musico? Man, Musico's a, a, an amazing person, man. He was a, a gentleman. And um, I see that he continues to grow and you see that the good people in, in the business grow and get to the top most of the time, you know, and um, that a lot of people respect them. And to me, it's weird because the sex the success of it is like turned upside down in my eyes. Like it, it's almost a, a bigger failure when you're getting that high up, you know, mm. because you're going to come crashing down right, eventually. You know? the fall. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, you know, um, but again, it's the life, you know, and you stick to it until, Someone stops you, you know? Jonathan B. said, a lot of people always have good things to say about Arturo Beltran Leiva. How was it working with him? Any stories? Man, he's a, he was a boss, man. Uh, 100% all the way. You know, and, um, you know, when we started working with them, like, they weren't introducing drugs themselves into, you know, the United States. It was a strictly, like, you know, Mexico. Like, you could buy the drugs from him there and, it wasn't easy to get into his inner circle, you know, and he had a lot of respect from a lot of people. And I, I don't think that sat well with the other people, you know, that he had covered, you know, was gaining so much ground and, mm. and, um, and, um, he, you know, he did so much, you know, he was like for the Sinaloa cartel, you know, he was, he was a huge part of it. You know, he was never like just a little dude in the business. Right. And he had so much control, and I don't think that the other people, you know, like that. And I think that's where the jealousy starts. And, you know, and like I said, he didn't have to do anything wrong, but just the jealous vibes, look at, you know, they turned their back on him. That's crazy. That's all it took. You know, and, that, you know, over here, we, you know, we're supposed to be like all about the streets. You're like, you never call the cops. You don't tell on no one, not even if it's your worst enemy, which is kind of stupid in my, you know, when you look back, when you really think about it. Right. But down there, I mean, they just use it as a tactic, you know? And I used to, at first I would question that, like, well, why? If you really don't want them in your team or you don't want them around, why don't you, you know, kill them? Or that's what you guys do anyways, you know? Why are you setting them up, you know? And it was just a way for them to stay on top and continue to, you know, do business as usual. You know, they turn in whoever they want and whoever they, you know, to help themselves and kill the others, you know? Right, whatever's good for business that day. Yeah, and you you know when you witness this and you're in the circle, you're like, 
damn, that could be me, you know? What was your relationship, or if y'all had a relationship, or any feelings about uh, Damaso, and, um, and and how you feel about the Chapitos? Man, Damaso was like a super respectful man as well, super intelligent. I think he was core to Chapo's operation, of course. You know, um, This is was, the father, right? Yeah, the father. He was like his right hand man. And, and um, you know, he was on the street, like he was out there like doing things, helping them grow, you know? So he was, you know, essential to him, you know? And um, my interactions with him were, 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 we had a pretty good relationship, you know? And um, what was the second part of that question? The Chapitos. I, like, our dealings with them was, they were, um, they were as young as we were, you know, I think um, me and I, and um, Ivan are like about the same age. As for the was a couple of years younger than us, actually, I think, I mean, we're all about the same age, but they were a little bit more greener. They were a little protected at first, you know, and, and um, Chapa really wanted us to kind of like hang out and do business together, kind of teach him what we were doing, you know, and um, they were real, um, how could I tell you, man, like, the way you would imagine a prince, you know, to the king, you know, spoiled and... Game of Thrones. And, yeah, it, it, a little ruthless. Like they didn't understand the relationship part, you know. Mm. And you know, for my brother and I, like I, we were young, but nobody gave us that. You know, we were able to, you know, do business with the with the with the dads, you know, the the heads, you know. And um, it, it was it was not something we were used to, like trying to like uh, school some young dude on how to you know take care of business, you know, the right way. What does Pete think of Amado Carillo Fuentes, and does he think he's still alive? Man, he's definitely not alive. <laughs> and I came, you know, a little later in, into the world, and, you know, when I was around the people, I mean, they all respected him, you know? They spoke, like, kind-hearted about him, and they would tell stories about him and say, mi compadre Amado, you know? In, a, in such a positive way, you know? So, you know, he was one of the unique ones. You know, like, everybody respected him. Have you guys ever had a run-in with Griselda Blanco? Oh, man, she was locked up already by the time we were in the game, you know? But she is a character. I, I continue to watch. I started watching the series. I'm entertained by it. I don't look for it to be factual, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, me either. But it's entertaining.